So thanks everyone for joining JASC today for our first presentation and the second round of our Oyatsu Time series. And this one's focused on food and eating, which is always a favorite of um, everybody. Um, the Japan America Society of Colorado is a nonprofit organization um, and we're dedicated to expanding people to people relationships between Colorado and Japan. And we are also a membership organization. So if you are enjoying this today and you're not a member, and you would like to join as a member, we would love to invite you into the community. Um, you can always go to our website, www.jascolorado.org, and you can become a member there. Um, so for today, we have a special guest that's joining us from her home kitchen in Boston, Massachusetts, and that is Deborah Samuels. And she's a cookbook author, a food and travel writer, and a cooking teacher. Um, and she's been working with children and families for over 25 years. And um, since 2000, she's been also a regular contributor to the Boston Globe. And her most recent cookbook is My Japanese Table, A Lifetime of Cooking with Friends and Family. So that should be of interest to people joining us today. Um, so she's now working uh, with the Washoku Iku program, um, which is managed by Table for Two, to bring healthy Japanese cuisine into classrooms and educational groups and to really equip students with the knowledge and the skills regarding healthy eating and Japanese food ways and best practices. Um, so this is a really great program and we're really happy to partner with them um, for our program today. And um, Deborah's gonna share a few recipes that you soy to make um, some goodies for us so that we can add those to our lineup of snacks, which um, everybody always loves having something new to add to their menu. So we're looking forward to it. So I'm gonna hand it over to you, Deborah. thanks. Okay. Hi everyone from uh, Boston, Massachusetts, or actually Lexington, uh, Massachusetts. I'm really happy to be here with you as a representative of Table for Two's Washoku Iku program. Um, we are now in the month of June, toward the end of the month of June, and in June um, is when uh, edamame is harvested in Japan. They even have an edamame day, which I'm told is June 15th. Um, and as probably many of you know, um, edamame is soy and soy, soy beans, and they are the base of a lot of foods in Japan. Um, we are working on soy this month to talk about health and the benefits of soy in your diet and to talk about a bunch of different um, things that are made with soy, the uh, nutritional value of soy, which you will be learning at another point. And we also have a special program called Edamame Champ, which tests your chopstick skills. And I understand you're going to be doing, uh, when is that, Jessica, like in July? Yeah, we're going to run our Colorado Championship um, as the third part of this series. So it'll be July 8th, same time, July. 1 30. And then the national championship is that, that following or that Saturday. So it's July 11th. And so we'll send our championship uh, winners to the national championship. So that should be fun. So Washoku also, we teach hands-on programs in elementary schools. We have a free online program um, that you can look into. And uh, we've been offering it free since everybody's been off from school because of this uh, COVID-19. And we're using our Edamame Champ Month as a way to uh, raise a few funds and donations. So you learn about that in another, um, in another session. But um, today I'm gonna make a couple of recipes with you. First, let me ask you, how many people have Edamame in their diet? Does anyone, can anyone tell me? And tell me how you eat edamame. I eat them the same every single time. I give them a flash boil and then sprinkle them with sea salt. <laughs> and sea salt. Okay. Do you eat them from the pod? From the pod. Pretty much from always. the pod. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of the it's way you would find them on very, the bowl. Yeah. It's a very uh, popular snack uh, in Japan. Um, in bars called izakaya and Great. people just kind of take them right off the pod and get that wonderful salty uh flavor with them and they've become recently popular in the united states these past i don't know maybe two years and now you can get them in regular supermarkets trader joe's um all over the place so 
And you'll learn next week that America is one of the largest producers of soybeans uh, in the world. And uh, the Midwest, um, Wisconsin, Minnesota, uh, these places are known for edamame. And a large portion of it is um, exported. And we just started eating the soybeans themselves here in the United States actually fairly recently. So I'm gonna do two recipes with you today. And the edamame is the fresh soybean, which everybody knows. And daizu is the dried soybean. And from daizu comes all sorts of products, which you'll talk about next week, but soy sauce, miso for miso soup, um, Inari Zushi, the tofu packets, tofu is made from uh, Daizu. So it's really a wonderful, healthy bean for uh, vegetarians and um, all the rest of us. So let's get started in cooking. I'm going to show you what we're making today. We're going to make two things. Um, these are not necessarily uh, sort of Japanese, but it's an adapted uh, recipe. And what we have here is a little edamame maki, which means a edamame roll. And today I used an egg roll skin for that. And I stuffed it with edamame, soybeans, and some cheese and fried it very quickly. It's very simple. It's a delicious snack. Um, it would be great in um, a bento box or just for a snack in the middle of the day. This is called oyatsu time. This is a great one. If you don't have these skins or gyoza skins or wonton skins you can use, you can also make it out of bread. And I'm going to show you how you can make a little edamame maki sandwich roll that you just put in the toaster. Um, so now it's kind of hard to get things um, at the supermarket. And so you've got to be clever and use everything you can. So that's our edamame one. And then the other thing is, does everybody know miso soup? I'm sure that you do, okay? Um, I'm gonna show you a way to make a really quick, real miso soup without using a powdered miso. And this is called a miso kama. And this is a little miso ball that has in it um, wakame, which is seaweed, scallions and today we're using edamame so you've got soy soy in here and a little bit of uh, dashi powder which I'll show you later. Dashi being the stock that you use very often to make Japanese uh, soups and um, sauces. Okay so this is very simple if you have a lot of miso you can just make up these balls and then you put them in hot water And as I said today, I'm going to be using um, egg roll wrappers that you can get. You don't have to get it at a um, super at a an Asian market. You can get this. Now soya is available certainly out here in all sorts of um, uh, supermarkets. So this is doesn't have to be a Japanese brand. This is not. And you're going to start off with. <coughs> Excuse me, a sheet of egg roll wrapper and put it down on your cutting board. And then it's too big to do for one wrap. We're going to be making four out of these. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it into four pieces down the middle. And it's not quite a square but they are close to squares, okay? And I'm not sure how many of you are cooking along with me, but um, if you are, that's great. I'm gonna just try to take it slow. Here are my four pieces, all right? And now I've got my edamame, and I'm gonna 
And one of the other ingredients, which is not particularly Japanese, but they use in many, many things, is cheese. So I've cut some cheese sticks out of a Monterey Jack uh, that would fit inside my um, wrapper. So you've got it in fourths. And all you're gonna do, I've got an oil in a small frying pan like this, heating it up a bit, and take your wrapper and go from a square to a diamond so that the point is at your belly button. Okay, there you go. Just on the diagonal. And then you're going to take about three or four beans, five beans, put them across the center like that. Oh, I forgot to tell you, you should have a little bit of water with you so that this is going to help you to seal the edges. And take a piece of cheese and put it right next to it like that. A little bit big. You want it just a little bit smaller than, you don't want it to go all the way to the end. You want to leave a little bit of the end showing so this is what you're going to wrap with. Take your finger and dip it in some water and put it around the edge of your wrapper, your egg roll wrapper. Okay, everybody with me? Yes. Yes. Okay. And then just from the bottom tip, the one closest to your stomach, to your belly, flip it over the top like that. And then you're gonna fold it in like an envelope. Right side in, left side in, and roll forward. Okay, you have some oil that's heating up on around medium. Okay, and let's do another one. All right, a couple more in the middle here. Now, basically, everything is cooked except the wrapper. So the cooking itself is going to be very, very brief. Um, but I think you're going to like the combination of flavors and textures. So you've got crunchy from the skin that we're frying. You've got kind of soft and melty from the cheese. And a really nice chewy texture from the edamame. And in, and in like an envelope and roll it forward. Make sure that the tip, yeah. and then you're going to put it right into your hot oil, like this. And I've made a couple ahead of time. So. These are good hot or cold, okay? Don't walk away because these cook very, very quickly. And today I'm using my favorite kitchen tool, saiboshi, which are long chopsticks. And anybody tell me why I would use these chopsticks instead of shorter ones? So you don't get burned. Oil. That's right. I use these for everything. Okay. And after about a minute or so, just flip them over till you get a nice crackle, nice brown crackle on the skin. And as I said, the only thing you're doing here is kind of melting the cheese and cooking the skin a little bit. These are great hot or cold, so you know you might as well make up a bunch. Um, I don't think I would put them in the refrigerator. Okay, after they're cooked, I try to make as many as you and your family will eat. Okay, and then just take a piece of uh, paper towel or something and. Make sure you've got all sides done. 
that's kind of the perfect color. You take a look here. How are you doing, Tori? How's yours looking? Can you hold they're, one up? Yeah, they're looking good so far. I am okay. Tori is using, can you tell everybody what you're using, Tori? I'm using Vietnamese rice um, spring roll wrapper. Um, and this is kind of my cooking, cooking here. It's, it's looking, it's looking good. Um, the cheese is getting nice and nice and melty here. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So mine are done. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to let them drain. So I was not aware that you could use rice paper rolls in this, rice paper wrappers. And so that's a great thing to know for people who are uh, gluten free and that you can fry these. That's fantastic. Um, okay. And I'll just show you very quickly. Same concept for bread. I've got a piece of bread here. I'm just going to cut off the crusts down the edge. Okay, like this. I am not throwing away these crusts. Do not worry. Japanese word, motai nai, don't be wasteful. I use these to make uh, croutons or breadcrumbs or tomorrow's French toast. So don't throw away your crust, okay? And then, um, I take a rolling pin and I'm just flattening the bread like this. Got a nice flat piece. And again, same thing, same concept. Just putting the edamame in the middle. A uh, piece of cheese. And in this case, um, I am not wetting anything. You can use a little bit of mayo if you like but it's not necessary. I'm just picking up the bottom piece, rolling it over the top. And so in this case, I'm gonna press because the bread kind of is like a dough now. And then I'm just gonna fold it the same way, but press it in, kind of pinch it tight and rolling it forward again and pinching. And now you've got a nice little envelope like that. Um, and what I did is I put it in the toaster oven with that flap side down, okay? And you've got to watch it. This is how it came out, okay? You can eat it like this or you can cut it in half. And in Japan, people always do things because things look better. So instead of cutting this straight down like this, I'm going to cut this on a diagonal. Okay. And you kind of get a much, you get a very pretty look with this. All right. And when people put it in bento boxes, it gives it kind of a nice, um, a nice eye appeal. And this is ready to eat. Okay. So we've got our edamame make. And we have it in both bread and egg roll form. Okay. How is it, Tori? Good? Tasting it now is good. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Claudine, did you make some? Jessica, did you make some? I didn't make it along with you, but I am going to make it for sure. You're going to make it. Okay. Great. How about Jessica? Has she made it? Is she I haven't, made, I haven't made these yet. I was feeding lunch to the kids, but Stone okay. is, Stone's ready for the meat. The, the, the the they're ready. <laughs> okay. And do we have, who else do we have on here? Is it Tasha? Tasha was at work, so I don't think she's cooking along with us. She's not cooking along with us. Okay. So those, that is our edamame maki. And now we'll go to our very simple miso tama. And let me just put this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. And we have here the miso. 
And I'm just going to turn my board over so people can see what I have. I have white miso, which is shido miso. Again, a product of uh, soybeans, fermented soybeans. And I'm going to use wakame, which is dried seaweed, edamame, because I have them, uh, some scallions that I chopped up, a little bit of dashi. Now, a lot of people make dashi these days with a dashi pack, which is a pack of dried bonito flakes. And you just put it in boiling water and you have an instant dashi. And this is a um, this is pure dashi, very different than the home dashi um, in a jar, which has a lot of sugar, MSG, um, and salt before you actually get to the fish. So if you can find dashi packs, I would recommend using that. And uh, so we've got scallions, we've got that. And I have a piece of wrap, okay, you pull off a piece of wrap, um, get your water boiling, and have that ready, and I'm just going to take about a heaping tablespoon of miso, put it in the middle of your plastic wrap, Okay, and now I'm going to add a little bit of wakame right into the middle. And a few edamame. Balance. Chopped really nicely. Okay. And a few sprinklings of the dashi. So making miso from scratch, you have to you have a dashi and then you're adding the miso to the dashi as it's, um, as it's simmering and you're adding all these things one by one. But this is a great thing if you go to work and you'd like a nice hot cup of soup or you have a lot of um, miso and you don't know what to do with it, you're just gonna make some Miso, miso balls and you're going to have hot soup instantly and then what you're going to do is you're just going to pull this up together like this I think I'm going to add a little bit more miso to the top okay and bring the four corners up like that and you're just going to keep it in the palm of your hand and twist the top just twist the top like this, okay, and open it up, and you have your misotama, and I just like to decorate everything, so I'm just going to put, if I couldn't see the edamame, I probably would, I just put a little edamame on top like that. And now I have a bowl, a miso bowl. This is a traditional miso bowl, but you can use a mug. Um, you can use anything that you want. And also I happen to have a little bit of tofu left over in my refrigerator. So I cut it up. I'm gonna put a few pieces of tofu at the bottom of my bowl. Um, I would not recommend putting fresh tofu into these balls, okay, because uh, tofu goes off um, if it's not used within a couple of days and in water. So if you have some and you want to use it fine, put your miso tama in your bowl or your mug. Okay. And I have some water boiling already. And just add it to your miso ball. Probably, a, this is kind of large. I made a larger one. It might be a little salty if you want to do it a little bit less, but it's boiled water. Definitely boiled water. 
and then you're just going to mix it around. Like this. And you have instant miso soup. The good kind. Okay, just keep mixing it around until your miso has melted into the boiling water. Okay. How you doing, Tori? How's it going? Really well. I'm using my just water, my water boiler, and it would be perfect if you're at work just to go to the coffee machine exactly. and grab a cup and exactly. get the, the hot water. It's awesome. I um somebody I uh, I learned about this from a Japanese woman um, about a month ago, and I asked if you could freeze it, and she said that you could. Mm -hmm. I did put it in the freezer. But the ball never hardened, but I don't think it's bad. Um, but, you know, if you want to make a bunch of them for a week at work, you know, ahead of time, it's a great thing to do. And I don't think it would go bad even if you keep it in the refrigerator. And this is such a nice way to transport it very simply in a little thing like that. So. Um, that is great. I have young adult sons at home, and I think I could even get them to pour boiling water over the little ball if I make them in advance. <laughs> yeah, this is really pretty easy. Literally um, just boiling water. That is great. <laughs> literally, just boiling water. Um, and if you have little kids, uh, like Jessica, this is like Play-Doh. So you could probably even get them to make these things. It's a, you know, it's a lot of fun. I think um, Stone is making it right now. Yeah, we're at home. We're making it. Stone's making a bowl for himself oh, right now. Okay. We're making it. Yeah, we're going to make a few for dinner tonight, too. So perfect. Excellent. That's so awesome. um, stone. As um, there are different kinds of table manners, everybody knows um, that. Um, and in Japan, it's appropriate for you to pick up your bowl and bring your food to your mouth. In America, in the West, we never do that. Okay, it's not considered polite. But in Japan, it certainly is. And no spoons, just chopsticks, okay? So there's no way you can get this to here if you don't bring it up to your mouth. <laughs> so the chopsticks are used to kind of bring up the ingredients in there. And before we eat, we say itadakimasu, okay? And Bring your bowl up, itadakimasu, and let's give it a taste. Let's see what you think, Tori. Okay? It, it's much, much fresher than the, the little the little packets that I used to use in, in my lunches, my bento boxes for work. This is definitely yeah. a, be a better replacement and not all the preservatives. So this, I used about a tablespoon and a half, almost two tablespoons. Might be, I might have used a little bit too much, but um, and I've used white miso, shino miso, which is the sweetest of all and the least, um, the least strong. But you could use aka miso, which is the red miso, or awase miso, which is a combination of white and red. Okay? So these are our miso recipes uh, for today. Um, and our edamame recipes. Does anybody have any questions or any comments? You think that you'll try this at home? So you said it's about how much of the miso would you use? About a tablespoon and tablespoon. a half. One about tablespoon? a tablespoon and a half. Okay. Right. About a tablespoon and a half per. This looks like a, a serious cup. You know, right. <laughs> a, little bit more than, a little bit more than a cup, and certainly a little bit more than. Sort of a Japanese size miso, right? Um, bowl of miso soup, uh, but I definitely would do that. Yeah, and a little bit of uh, tofu in the bottom is really good. Other vegetables you can use cooked vegetables that you have and um, put them in too. Um, if you were going to add seaweed, like a lot of times miso soup has seaweed, you could do that as well. Um, 
Say that one more time, Corneen. Sometimes when you get miso soup out, it has seaweed in it. So oh, yes. what kind of seaweed would you use? Wakame. 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 So this is the wakame. This thing with, oh, that's it. Yeah. Gotcha. You can cut yep. for you. Um, the one I had was a little bit longer. So because this ball is so small, I snipped it so that it would be even smaller. Perfect. And I would just use these. Sometimes when people make miso soup, they just drop the dried wakame into the soup. Some people reconstitute it before they do it. But I'm learning that most Japanese just drop it into the soup. So it reconstitutes very quickly. Got it. Great. So easy. Yes. Easy, easy, easy. That's the whole, the whole point of it. And I think easy ingredients to get. Um, now everything is available online. Um, so, you know, um, if it's, if it's difficult for people to get out, you can get a lot of things online. That's I'm great. And here in Denver, I'll say one of our great partners here in Denver is um, Pacific Mercantile. It's a Japanese supermarket downtown oh. Sakura Square. Uh -huh. They would absolutely have all of these ingredients. Um, so we would encourage you to run down there and support them. They've been doing a great job this whole time. Yeah. Thank you so much, Deborah. This is fantastic. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for playing with your food with me. Um, <laughs> so fun. Uh, so <laughs> it is really yeah. fun. I'm so glad you could cook along, Tori. That was great. Yeah. Tori, how did the spring rolls work? Did they cook up nicely? They cooked up nicely. Um, I think there's kind of a, a fine line of how melty to get the cheese, but my ones I cooked are still... Um, Still looking, looking good. They stayed together here. Okay. Well. That's, yep. Very good. Okay. Super. But I, I learned could, something. I could see how if it if it cooked much longer in the oil, the the wrapper may start to break down. But it they're looking good good now. Okay. Wonderful. That is great. So we have recorded this, and we'll upload it to our YouTube channel and share that with you in case you want to share it with anybody else. Yes, we love to do that, and I hope anybody who's watching will join uh, for the rest of, rest of the Edamame uh, program, the Edamame Champ uh, program, and uh, get practicing with your chopstick skills. That's right. So we'll meet again um, same time next Wednesday at 1 o'clock. That's going to focus on um, chopsticks etiquette and things you should and should not do with your chopsticks. Um, so that'll be next week on July 1st. Okay. So thank you all. Have a wonderful day. Um, enjoy Bye. the rest of your work day, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.